Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of 100 Kubernetes Tools. And I'm joined today by uh, the WeaveWorks team that develops Flux and the guys who created the concept GitOps, uh, the original GitOps uh, tool with Flux, and they continue to innovate in the space. Uh, me. So guys, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Really good. Thank you very much. So I think you guys are, you started off with like the basic GitOps concept and that you are essentially taking a repository and then making Kubernetes clusters and many of them reflect that repository, right? That's tons of benefits. But I understand you're now doing something even beyond that, like taking that base GitOps scenario and now making that even easier for developers with something called GitOps or Flux GitOps or... We've GitOps. With GitOps. We've, the tool is named GitOps. We've GitOps is open source. You can get it on GitHub and Paolo will show you some of it today. It adds not only a user interface to Flux, but also some really nice developer workflows that make it incredibly easy for application developers to use Kubernetes. So just to clarify, this is a separate tool that's built on top of Flux, but it's an optional add-on. And I Correct. did run like dot slash GitOps, right? Yeah, so here's how this works. One thing that we love about Flux is it's a small, secure, very scalable tool with an, a low surface area. It's been through very high intensity security evaluations at CNCF to get to graduation this week. So thumbs up for that. And the way that it's used is Amazon, Microsoft, VMware, Weaveworks, uh, Mesosphere, nowadays they're called D2IQ, and other companies have all embedded it inside their own stacks uh, to let you use GitOps within their products or their platforms as they're called. So if you use Microsoft Arc or AKS, you're using Flux inside. If you use Amazon EKS, A, you're using Flux inside, et cetera. And Weaveworks have got a tool which is open source for platform engineers, application developers, and people doing CI CD called Weave GitOps, which does exactly the same thing. It adds a UI and some workflows to make it an amazing app platform for developers. Okay, uh, can we dive right in and see that? Yes, we can, Paolo. Brilliant, okay, so um, I will do a quick demo about uh, GitOps run. So imagine I created my first application that's uh, podding for right here, and I need to create my first state to deploy into a cluster, right? So what I will do here is pretty much run GitOps run. Uh, I'm creating a staging cluster, you can see down here that my kind cluster is pretty much empty. So as I run this command, the GitOps um, run will pretty much make sure that my cluster has Flux installed. So, you know, all the, the images will be uh, deployed right now, um, the CRDs and, and so on. And as soon as all that are, you know, are installed, uh, what GitOps run does behind the scenes is it will configure a source, which is like a flux source, which is this run dev bucket, and we'll synchronize all these files into that bucket in such a way that you don't need to commit your changes to then see them you know, happening on the, in your cluster. They happen as you change. So for example, uh, our staging cluster director here, uh, we have this customization file. If I go here and add you know, a file that doesn't exist, for example, and I go to our application here, right away I have the feedback that I'm trying to, you know, use a resource that doesn't exist. If you're, you know, especially when you're starting on your GitOps journey, this actually is a bit more painful because you have to do a commit, you push that into your repository, you would wait for Flux to synchronize, and then you would get an error. Wait, wait, hang on. Is... I want to, sorry, I'm interrupting, but I want to understand yeah, what you just saw is we didn't just see like the normal Git um, GitOps workflow, right? We just saw um, something that I've actually never seen before, which is very cool. What we're doing is you're taking a local directory, you're running like GitOps run on that. And now whenever you make a change there, automatically that's synced into your live cluster, you're essentially combining a developer workflow with like a GitOps workflow. Is that right? Pretty much. So the thing is, especially when you're starting on the GitOps, it's really hard to get your first cluster, your you know your syntax is correct and so on. With this, you can get your declarative state right before you commit into your repository in the first place. So you make sure that everything is working 
And once that is okay, you commit, push that into your repository or OCI, for example, and then you share that across, you know, your teams and, and your company. So I can do GitOps and I can also like experiment along the way without actually committing and spamming my Git repo with like a bunch of commits there. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's quite powerful, right? So for example, here, if I go and I actually add my app, there, um, it will, you know, try again. And in this case, it will give me another error because I haven't defined the namespace, for example, for these resources. So as I'm fixing those things and I'll save now, it will then start, you know, reconciling again and will tell me, you know, this is working. And then in parallel to that, if I actually check on my uh, Kubernetes cluster, my pod info is now being deployed. So again, like all this in seconds without needing to do commits, without needing to do anything, I, I get the feedback instantly. And one, one more question, then we'll wrap this up. I know we're also pressed on time. Um, no and then whenever I'm ready and like I'm developing and I see a state that I like, now I would do a git command, like open the PR and do the regular GitOps workflow where people then review it and it gets merged. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Um, so then I want to ask, go back to Alexis for a second. I want to ask, um, I know you guys like are the original creators of GitOps to begin with, right? So maybe you have a, like Flux is really mature. It's used by a lot of companies I know. You know, it's used under the hood and a lot of the major cloud providers as well. Um, but for someone who's like starting out today and they're looking at different GitOps tools, um, what makes Flux unique? Like what's really unique about Flux that... Other than the fact that it was the original one, but that really differentiates it from other tools out there. I think supporting the different use cases and being present in all of the major cloud providers is a big step forward. It's also graduating at CNCF today, Wednesday, the 29th. Today is Tuesday. I'm pretty sorry. Tuesday, the 29th of November. It's graduating tomorrow. Uh, if you're listening to this, it's probably in the past by now. So it's a graduated CNCF project. It's inside all the hyperscalers. It's been used for years by enterprises. That's baseline. But it's got great use case support. I think Paolo's example of a developer getting started is just so valuable for people who want to go past that stage of, okay, we got Kubernetes up and running with our, with our super team, but now the whole organization wants to use it. So that's really great. Another use case is integration with Terraform, which we're not going to show you today, but it's really powerful. So if you're a Terraform lover, and there are many of those, you can do Terraform and GitOps together, which is amazing, and have sensible outcomes that are eventually consistent. And there are things like progressive delivery, platform engineering, advanced CI, CD, all of these things are use cases that make Flux special. The last one, which I think Paolo should describe, is Flux has support for OCI, which lets us have signed images. Paolo, do you want to say a few words about why this might be cool if you're a developer? Yes, sure. So OCI is pretty much a standard that is, is being used, you know, for quite a, a lot of applications nowadays in, in terms of like Docker and, and, you know, container registries. And what that allows you is to combine in one file, in one format, <clears throat> all the data you might require for a given application, right? So you can have the application itself plus any security primitive for you to validate that workload right so for example you can have s bones you can have uh, the, the the signature of those artifacts uh and so on which allows you to have one deployment uh artifact which you can verify its provenance and then apply that if you believe that is uh you know the, the, the artifact you, you you're looking for so to wrap things up, would it be right if I said that like you can take a lot of GitOps tools and like you can get up and running and you can like take a Git repository and then sync into your cluster with a lot of the tools, but maybe Flux is the one that would like make the CISO and the developers and like the entire organization, if you're in an enterprise company, the happiest? I hope so. I think there are some great tools out there, let's be honest. Um, but Flux is aiming to solve these problems in a very safe, scalable way. And we've GitOps, which included the demo that Paolo showed you, is a free open source tool, which includes some of these extra developer features that are also GitOps friendly. Okay, that's awesome. Guys, thank you for joining me. Um, before we finish up, any other comments you guys want to add or that people should know about? Where can they follow you and where can they get more information about Flux? 
Well, I'm happy to take questions on Twitter. I'm mmonadic, M-O-N-A-D-I-C. Paolo? Yeah, uh, well, on the CNCF Slack, uh, I'm PJBJF, and I'm on the Flux channel there. So any, any questions, definitely link us there. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye.